Hey everyone, and welcome back to episode three of my Code With Me series, where we go through SQL interview questions together in real time. By now, all of you should know exactly how important SQL is for any data related role. In today's video, we're gonna be going through three interview questions together of different difficulties. Let's get straight into it. All right, so the first question that we're gonna go through today is called second highest salary, and it has an easy difficulty ranking. So in this question, we have to write a SQL query to select the highest second salary in the engineering department. And if more than one person shares the highest salary, then the query should select the next highest salary. We have the employees table with ID, name, salary, departments table with department ID and name, I'm assuming. And we want the output to just be the second highest salary in the engineering department. All right, so by default, let's I always like to have a look at my tables to see what they have. So let's go select all from employees. Just see the contents of the table. Okay, so employees just looks like first name, last name, salary, and their department ID, which I'm sure would join onto this column. Let's join them together. Select all from employees. Let's name the table as E. I like to do the first letter of the table name. Um, and then we'll left join departments D. And on, I'm assuming it will be e.department underscore id on d.id. And let's just give this a quick run. Pretty sure it will work. Okay, this is perfect. We also just want where the name is engineering because we're only really caring about the engineering department. So I'll go where d.name equals engineering. Let's format it correctly. Okay, so we have to figure out who has the second highest salary. So let's go with, let's select the salary. We need to use a rank or row number function of some sort to give it a ranking. And because it's asking for second highest instead of second lowest, we want to start from the top. So we want to rank our salaries from biggest to smallest. So let's use the rank function. Um, I can never remember the syntax, but I think it goes like rank over. We'll see if it works. And then we want to order by salary descending. So I'll go E dot salary descending. Let's also call this E dot salary. Let's keep the human as well. Let's go E dot ID. That way we know who the person is. So for every person, we're going to have their salary and their ranking. Where product name is also as salary rank. And let me just give this a run and see how it is. 333. Three, three. Okay, it is going down. All right, nice. In our case, I believe we need to use a dense rank instead of a rank because rankings deal with ties differently. So if two people have the same salary, then the next person will get a ranking of three if we use rank. But we want to use dense rank to ensure there's no gaps in our ranking. So let's just try this again. Yeah, there's no ties anyway, so it shouldn't matter too much. Now we just have to select the second record. So I'm just going to put all this into a CTE. So with salary rank as I like to just tab it across. Then I'll select everything from salary rank where the actual ranking equals two, which should give us the second highest but we don't want to select everything. We just want to select the salary because that's the output. And then this should give us our correct answer. So I'm just going to try to submit the solution and see if it's what we want. Okay, very nice. All right, so that's question one done. Let's now move on to another question. All right, so another question we're going to do today is called fewer orders. It is an easy Amazon interview question. So in this case, we have to write a query to identify the names of users who placed less than three orders or ordered less than $500 worth of product. So we have the transactions table and users table and a products table. So as usual, let's go select everything from transactions just to see what is in the table. So in this case, if we take a look, transactions just contains the user ID, what time they bought, what product, and the quantity of the product. And I'm gonna assume users just contains the ID with the name and products will contain product ID and the price point. So obviously we're gonna to have to join together some of these tables because we want to see 
the dollar value of what the users are buying. So again, let's go from transactions, let's go T. Let's left join on product because we have the products table here, which is products P. And I assume we're going to be joining on T dot product ID must equal P dot ID. And at the same time, we need to join on the user ID. So let's go left join users U on U dot I on T dot user ID equals U dot ID. So this should be a successful join that aggregates all of these three tables together. I like to name my tables very intuitively just with T, P and U. Hopefully that makes it pretty clear for you. Um, and I just like to check my code every step that I write to make sure it's still not broken. Um, so this is very good. In this case, what do we want the output to be? We just want to get the names of users. So let's just start with u.name, just so we're isolating down their name. And then we have to calculate the products they're buying. So we know that first person TJ Ross would have bought five of product one, each which costs $1,000. So we need to kind of calculate the total product cost. So placed less than three orders. So I can just do a count t.id, which should give us number of transactions because that's how many records they've appeared in the transactions table. And let's also try to get the total order amount. So we're going to have to do some kind of multiplication of quantity with price. So let's go t dot quantity, which tells us how many items they bought and product price, which I think is a column. Yep, price is a column. This should give us the individual product prices, but we want to sum this up because some people could have bought multiple products and multiple quantities of that. So let's go sum and let's call this total order amount. And of course we have to group by the user. You can do u.name or you can just be lazy like me and group by one, which apparently isn't very good practice, but I do it anyway. So let's just run this code and see what happens. And if the output is what we want it to be, what do we have here? Function sum does not exist. Oh, there's a space here. Great. Um, silly mistake. It always happens. All right. So now what do we have? We have TJ Ross, three transactions. Okay. So we either want to get people who place less than three orders or people who got less than $500 worth of product. So now it's time to use the having statement. So we can go having this value here is less than or equal to three or this total price here should be less than 500. And this should isolate exactly what we want. And we only want to get one column uses less than. So I can probably even comment at these two things because we don't want to keep them. To comment them out, I just hit my um, my windows forward slash or you can just add in two dashes. So if I run this now, this should give me what I want. Let's just test it out. Okay, this is great, but I have to rename my column as uses less than and then I'm just going to submit and hopefully this is all good. Amazing. All righties. Let's now move on to a final question. This question is called top three salaries and it was asked at, I believe Amazon, Google, as well as TikTok. And it is a medium difficulty. Pretty similar tables to before. Employees, departments, we just kept it consistent today. So given the employees and departments table, write a query to get the top three highest employee salaries by department. And if the department contains less than three employees, then just list the top one or two. And the output should include the full name in one column. So first and last name with a space, I assume, department name and the salary. Let's start by joining together these tables. And go select all from departments. D, left join employees E on E dot department ID equals D dot ID. 
and let's just keep the columns that we want. We've got to keep department ID because that's what we want to group by. So I'll say, actually, I'll just go d.id. What else do we want? Department name, d.name as department underscore name. Keep e.first name, e.last name, e.salary. And let's combine their names. So I like to combine them with the concatenate function. So same as what's in Excel, but I think it's just called concat. And you put together the fields you want. So e dot first name. And we want to have a space in the middle. So I'll just go space. And then e dot last name. I think we need to put an extra space in the middle here. I'm not too sure, but we'll just check this. And I'll call this column employee name because that's what they want. Let me just give this a run first to see if it works. The anticipation to make sure the code is good. Okay, the concatenation has worked well. That's step one done. So we now need some kind of ranking and we got to get the top three employee salaries by department. So let's go rank, another rank function over. This time, yes, we want to order by E dot salary descending, but we have to group by the department ID. So we got a partition by, kind of like a group by. So you're just getting the highest salary within each particular department. You can group by department name or department ID. Let's go department ID just because it's easy quantitative measure. So rank over partition by this as department ranking. Just give it a rank. Let me run this and see how it is. Okay, it's now given us highest salary within each department. Very good. Um, we now have to extract the top three. So we can use this table, turn this into a CTE again. So with department ranking as this whole thing, this whole table is now a CTE. We now select from this table. So let's go select all from this table that we just created where the ranking has to be less than or equal to three. What do we need that we just want to select employee name. We want their department name as well. And we want their salary. So does this give me what I want? Oh, are we done? Okay, that was much easier than I expected. That is all that I have for today's video. Hopefully you enjoyed going through these three questions together and understanding my thought process. If you want to see more of these types of videos, let me know down in the comments below. And as always, I will see you in my next one. Bye.